trying to keep it very simple. It can be as simple as watching the video that's been prepared by women from across Canada, but it must be kept safe. We cannot um, encourage anybody to, um, to put um, vulnerable people at risk. So I'm going to hand it over now to Nancy Weir, who is our beloved administrator, who's going to do the um, acknowledgement of the land. The sacred land which the Women's Interchurch Council of Canada operates has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, our meeting place in Toronto is still home to the, is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. Thank you so much, Nancy. And now I'm going to invite Lise Govan to lead us in prayer in both of our official languages, English and French. Lise, you, you need to unmute. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we prepare to celebrate the World Day of Prayer. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is to convey the concerns of the women of Vanuatu. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Prière extraite de l'encyclique Fratelli Tutti. Prière au Créateur. Seigneur et Père de l'humanité, toi qui as créé tous les êtres humains avec la même dignité, insuffle en nos cœurs un esprit fraternel. Inspire-nous un rêve de rencontre, de dialogue, de justice et de paix. Aide-nous à créer des sociétés plus saines et un monde plus digne, sans faim, sans pauvreté, sans violence, sans guerre. Que notre cœur s'ouvre à tous les peuples et nations de la terre pour reconnaître le bien et la beauté que tu as semé en chacun, pour forger des liens d'unité, des projets communs, des espérances partagées. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lee. We're now going to watch the um, World Day of Prayer uh, country video. And this would be, if you've ordered a DVD or USB stick, this is on it, or you can see it on the WIC website, but we're going to watch it together now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Vanuatu, meaning country that stands up is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Nivanyuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language or Bislama, English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliette Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her, 
but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat, Each had their own government, languages, food, styles of clothing, traditional healers, and midwives. Homes had thatched roofs. Although people had been living on the islands for 3,000 years, in 1774, Captain James Cook named the islands New Hebrides, as they reminded him of his Scottish homelands. Blackbirding was prevalent between 1847 and 1904. South Pacific Islanders were kidnapped, tricked, or coerced into working for very little or no pay on plantations in Queensland, Fiji, and Hawaii. By 1906, New Hebrides became a colony with a more centralized government ruled jointly by Great Britain and France. Political independence and a homegrown constitution were established in 1980. Vanuatu has a literacy rate of 64%. Secondary education enrollment was 35% in 2015. There are strategies to increase this figure significantly by 2030. Vanuatu's economy is largely based on tourism, construction, and offshore financial services. Big hotels and resorts are owned by foreigners. A minor income earning activity is Nagol, which involves men climbing flimsy 100-foot towers and diving headfirst into empty space with nothing to break their fall but vines tied to their ankles. Others sell their traditional weaving. Manufacturing industries contribute only 5 to 9% of the gross domestic product. Education curriculum points youth to white-collar jobs. In the current Vanuatu democracy, the Constitution provides for gender equity, but there is limited political will to implement it. In the 2020 federal election, no women were voted into power. Women represent 40% of the labor force in both public and private sectors and are often the primary caregivers for family members. Gender-based violence is a serious issue affecting women and girls. Approximately 60% of women in Vanuatu have experienced some form of physical and or sexual violence. Access to healthy foods, safe drinking water, and adequate sanitation are concerns, especially for children in many areas of this republic. Most deaths in those under five years of age are due to malnutrition. There has also been an increase in stunted growth and development in children. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens, and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women.
I hope everybody enjoyed that video. And uh, if you have, I don't know if someone's checking the chat, but if there's any technical difficulties, hopefully you can be putting those in there as well. Um, but it's that gives us a glimpse of the country that we're going to be praying with this year. Janet um, McFadden is our uh, communication specialist, and she's going to share now a little bit about World Day of Prayer. What is World Day of Prayer? Okay, thanks, Kyle. Yeah. I'm just going to pull up my screen share. Bear with me for a moment. Just for a moment. Hmm. It's better. Thanks everybody for your patience. What is World Day of Prayer? So World Day of Prayer is a global ecumenical movement which brings Christians of many traditions together to observe a common day of prayer each year. As Kath mentioned, it's a movement as well. So if we're not able to celebrate it on March the 5th, the first Friday of March, then please celebrate it on another day. And I see that someone wants to be admitted. Through preparation and participation in the worship service, we can learn how sisters from other countries, languages and cultures understand the biblical passages in their context. I'm just, can someone admit Kay there? The model for a World Day of Prayer movement is informed prayer and prayerful action. And we affirm that prayer and action are inseparable and that both have immeasurable influence in the world. To talk a little bit about the history, began in the 19th century, Christian women coming together in the US, becoming involved in missions at home and worldwide. And in 1895, the Anglican women of Canada decided that it should be a national day um, to honor the corporate interaction of the missions. A little bit more about um, the history of World Day of Prayer. In 1918, Presbyterian women in Canada ca came together. Um, they called representatives from five women's missionary boards to promote the spreading of Christ's kingdom through united prayer and action. In 1920 was the first interchurch meeting giving birth to the Interim Committee on the Federation of the Women's Mission, Missionary Society Boards of Canada. In 1922, the Canadian and U.S. committees agreed to use the same theme and day for the, uh, for the World Day of Prayer. And this annual event became the Women's World Day of Prayer in 1927. And just a note that the Canadian committee changed its name to become the Women's Interchurch Council of Canada and now includes representatives from 10 church partners. This council continues to coordinate the World Day of Prayer in Canada and to speak to issues that concern women of faith across the country. And I see someone's trying to be admitted. So as you can imagine, with nearly a century of services, we've got an incredible amount of material created for World Day of Prayer. And it's just so wonderful to have a different host each year so we can continue to learn. Some of you may recall that we have five countries listed here and um, perhaps some of you could remember which of those were for the last five years. There's so many ways to celebrate World Day of Prayer in 2021. So, on our website, which is wic.org, W-I-C-C.org, there's actually going to be a handy button. It's already in place now, but on February 15th, you'll be able to click on that button and watch our full-length service video. We know that some people are going to gather by Zoom, 
and they're going to take on the normal speaking roles as they would have done in past years from the actual booklet. Um, we're encouraging people to recruit an individual from your organization who's comfortable setting up Zoom calls. Keep in mind um, what your user platform is and then set that up accordingly so that you know that everybody who wants to be involved can get into the Zoom room. I see Kay McKenzie's still trying to get in. Um, we know that certain local cable stations may be broadcasting the service video and Kathy may be talking about that later, but we've been able to put that in place in one region so far uh, at the request of a coordinator in that area. We know that some people are gathering if they have a bubble um, or with family members to read through and discuss the service, keeping in mind that we're all complying with any precautionary measures that our local health authorities have in place. We're encouraging everyone um, to, if they're using our video, to watch the service in advance. Um, and we know that some groups, we know that some churches in Toronto, for example, are watching the service individually in advance and then they're gathering later for Zoom conversations. We know that um, it's, it's going to be missing some of the tasty cookies and um, coffee that we would have done in the past when we got together in large groups, but we are gathering for Zoom conversations in some areas. Some of you may be interested in this event. Um, there's going to be a paint night. Um, we are actually gonna limit the platform down to 100 um, just to make sure that we get everybody into our site. Um, so we, uh, have a th we have a painting inspired by our theme, which is built on a, a firm foundation. And that's happening on February the 5th from nine to, uh, sorry, from seven to 9.30, that's Eastern Standard Time. I'm actually gonna be leading the paint night. So if you have any questions, um, my email is communications at wic.org. And I'll be sharing that with that you later. And it's very easy to join. Just go to wicc.org and click on join online events. So I'm looking forward to being in one of the breakout rooms today. And I'm sure that um, people will be sharing um, how they hope to celebrate World Day of Prayer in their area. So these are just some of the ideas, some tips. Um, all services should include an opportunity to pray for the women of Vanuatu and an opportunity to donate. Um, we're asking everybody who um, wants easy access to all our resources to register as a coordinator. It also helps us keep track of who's been involved for 2021, and that will help us get the word out for next year. Um, there's lots of files. If you're looking to try to organize or look for resources, again, go to wicc.org. And once again, encouraging, make a partnership with a tech-savvy person um, in your church or your group. Um, share, 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 um, continue to spread the word about World Day of Prayer as much as possible. And again, review all the materials in advance. Um, if you're going to be using the service video, we're asking the churches to actually download that service. Um, if you're going to be sharing on via Zoom in your congregations, we might be talking more about that later. Um, we are, there are going to be breakout rooms, and as Kath has already mentioned, if you have any questions, please type those into the chat box. And I'll stop sharing now. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks so much, Janet. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit more uh, uh, about Janet a little later. Let me just put you back in the spotlight. And... Uh, but now we have a, a bit of a treat in that uh, there's usually food at events like this. Wow, our very own uh, Nancy has cooked up something special. So let me just share that video with you. Hi there. Um, I know that a lot of people, one of the things they look forward to in World Day of Prayer is having a time of fellowship afterwards that includes a nice cup of tea or coffee and something sweet to eat. So with COVID-19 numbers being what they are right now, 
It could be that we are not going to get together, but we can still have a delicious snack after watching the video of the World Day of Prayer service. I'm going to show you a recipe that you can make for one person. Uh, it's chocolate coconut mug cake, and the recipe is on our website. So start with a mug and crack one egg into it. And we need to beat that up really thoroughly. Um, mug cakes became popular a few years ago. They're a nice idea for one or two people. Uh, you can add a tablespoon of milk. And two tablespoons of oil. quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And give that a stir. So for the dark drum ingredients, I'm going to place them on top of the egg mixture first. So you'll need a quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of sugar. You could use a little less if you don't like things very sweet. Three tablespoons of cocoa powder. People of Vanuatu are really lucky because they can grow coconut and cocoa and vanilla there. So it's kind of a sweet place to live that way. You'll need a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And a sixteenth teaspoon of salt. So I don't have a sixteenth teaspoon, so I just use half my eighth one. And two tablespoons of coconut. Now I know some people don't really like coconut, so you can leave it out if you want. And then just have chocolate cake. So just kind of stir together all those dry ingredients and then stir them down into the egg mixture. That way you don't have to wash a bowl. Just make sure there's no dry spots in the cocoa. It just always brings a smile to my face. Um, thank you, Nancy, for that video. And I know that some of us have probably already tried it. The, the recipe for that mug cake, not to be confused with mud cake, mug cake is on the uh, WIC website under the resources. And um, so now we're going to ha uh, have Julie. Let me see if I can find Julie here. And uh, there's Julie. I'll spotlight Julie for you. You're going to meet the field reps a little bit later, but uh, let me just take a minute to introduce Julie. Julie Ginter is uh, the woman behind the scenes in a lot of our things. She has um, does the website updates, does a lot of the book work, does a lot of the investigation and things on, on uh, helping us get uh, all the licenses in place to put things on television. And so Julie, welcome and just, um, I'll, I'm going to hand it over to you so you can share the screen. If anyone's wondering, where are these great resources that uh, Janet was talking about? Thanks, Catherine. So I'm Julie Ginter, and I live in Ajax, Ontario. And as Catherine said, I do the updates 
on the website. And I'm just going to show you, here's the website. When you first arrive, um, you'll see this screen and it has all the big buttons that you can go to um, join our online events by clicking on this button in the World Day of Prayer. Um, you can either click here or there's the tabs across the top who have that have drop down menus. And for instance, this one here for World Day of Prayer, um, if you click on how to coordinate, that's probably where most of you went to get the information that you um, needed to log in as a service coordinator. So what I wanted to show you here is this big button over here, which is where the video will be. So when you click on this big button, after February 15th, that will take you, uh, it will direct you right to the YouTube service video. And that video um, of the virtual service um, is one hour and two minutes and nine seconds. So uh, just so you know that um, when you're playing it by Zoom, sometimes the free Zoom platforms only have 40 minutes. So if your church has um, the larger um, platforms, they can play that no problem. Um, so what I wanted to show you here is under World Day of Prayer tab, how to coordinate. When you log in as a service coordinator, you'll get all the instructions under here, how to coordinate. And here's the login instructions for the service coordinator. And there's also um, a lot of tabs here on planning and um, promoting um, and the donations, the grants. When you scroll down, you'll see all the field reps and their information if you're having problems logging in as a service coordinator. Here's the country video just out, um, and you can just click on that to watch that. We watched that earlier. So, um, once you've logged in as a service coordinator by following those instructions, you just click on this tab up here, service coordinators. And on this page, you'll have all the resources. You'll have the artwork and these tabs all open up as well. You'll see the artwork, um, introducing the country. Uh, there's Nancy's um, coconut cake recipe and the service booklets and the planning tools. And here's a bilingual um, booklet with the two columns with the English and the French um, side by side. I'm just gonna go back. And all the videos are here as well. The promo video and the devotional video. You can click here to download the videos as well. And this is where the one hour service will be as well that I mentioned. It will be in the YouTube format here and it will be in the Vimeo format for your church or yourself to download and to save for free on your computer. It'll have different format um, 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 options. It will have um, smaller formats that you can download just to your to your phone or your tablet, or it will have um, like the larger, bigger file that you would want to download just to play it for your church. And um, there's the Bible study and the children's program pages. There's the music here. And you can preview and download the songs as well if you wanted to use these songs. Here's the field reps and their information again. And then when you're sending in um, the donations, the, the forms are available here. And also for sending in um, donations, this is um, the tab to click on World Day of Prayer Offering. because this gives instructions on exactly um, the three options, um, how to send the remittance in by checks um, and where to mail it or telling them um, 
participants just to go to our website and click on the big donate button that's in the top up here. That would actually be the easiest way, but um, if they would rather give a check and mail it, that's fine too. And if you're collecting money, then you can also go to this um, this page and click on the tax receipt request forms for anyone that gave over $20 and has given the money to you, then you can, um, and the cash to you, then you can um, fill out that form and send in the money yourself through this button here. Really, you're really yeah. cut down on um, the shipping and the, there's no custom shipping this year. Do you wanna talk a little bit about my store and what is available to be ordered? Sure. This tab here on the left as well. Um, so there's the resources and the My Store. And you can go to My Store. And if you don't want to download the service video for free onto your computer, you can also order the, the video on a USB stick. And that is that's $15. Um, you can just add it to your cart and then pay for it, and it will be shipped free to you as well as a DVD, you can, you can click on that and, and have the service video as a DVD. And the other, the other tab is my profile. If, if you change your address or, or um, phone number or anything, you wanna um, update that, that's under the my profile under service coordinators. And that's, that's about it. Thanks, Julie. Um, I'll just stop sharing, just a minute. Okay. Thanks so much, Julie. Uh, for some of you, I'm sure that's just about as clear as mud. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, introduce you or allow the field reps actually to introduce themselves. Let's just add, uh, there's Nancy, let me find everybody. So here comes Janet, Nancy and um, Linda, and now I'm looking for Kathy, just a minute now. There's 113 of us on here. It's not necessarily easy to find everyone. Okay, there we go. I'm going to uh, turn it over now to uh, Nancy and the field reps and, uh, to introduce each other. I can start. I'm going to introduce uh, Linda. Uh, this is Linda. She is the field rep for BC and Alberta and Saskatchewan and the Northwest Territories and Yukon and Nunavik. She's a dynamic community person who was uh, coaxed out of retirement. She's now um, a United Church minister in BC. Um, she's also been a minister in Alberta. She's a native of Nova Scotia. She's been on college faculty. She's worked overseas when she was the executive secretary of the Japan North America Commission on Cooperative Missions. She's a loyal friend. She's a great family member and we are so privileged to have her as a field rep. So that's a little bit about our Linda. Thanks, Janet. I'm going to introduce Nancy. And you know that Nancy is the person that answers the phone. She's located in Toronto. She's not in her, I think you're at home today, Nancy, is that right? And, but if we saw Nancy at work, we'd see this beautiful picture behind her, which I always enjoy. So when Nancy's not answering emails and sending out emails and answering the phones, she enjoys time with her family in Ontario and her two sons and her beloved partner. And when she's not, not with them, she is doing this. Can you see this? It's a crochet hook. And Nancy loves to crochet and be very creative with all kinds of things. She is a loyal daughter to her father and enjoyed some time, was able to enjoy some time with him over Christmas. And um, when I first encountered Nancy, I thought she was a different Nancy who used to work at the World Day of Prayer. And uh, much to my uh, enjoyment, I've discovered Nancy Weir. And uh, I so enjoy working with you, Nancy, and uh, 
your calm presence where the work of World Day of Prayer is so welcome. Thanks, Nancy, for all that you do. And keep on crocheting. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm going to introduce Kathy Tubb. Um, she's one of she's been one of our field reps for three years now, um, and we really appreciate her technical knowledge and ability, which she garnered on her job, and now she's working for us. Um, she really enjoys speaking to and helping all the World Day of Prayer coordinators from the various parts of Canada that she covers. Um, she has also coordinated two World Day of Prayer services herself, um, the one from Cameroon and the one from the Philippines, so she can empathize with the challenges that people face as they're coordinating World Day of Prayer. Kathy and her husband live about one hour north of Toronto, and they are expecting a new grandbaby actually any minute now, <laughs> so um, we're pretty excited for them. Well, thank you, Nancy. Um, I'll take the time to introduce Janet. Um, Jan yep, there's Janet. Janet is a lady of many hats in the World Day of Prayer. She, uh, she's a field rep for Toronto, but she also does a lot of our communication work. So uh, one of the things that you'll notice is we connect if you ever get, uh, get that monthly. And she, she does a lot of the pulling together of, of our communication. Uh, Janet was born in Lindsay, Ontario. Um, moving along, yeah, not right away. She graduated eventually after going through school at uh, University of Western. So taught secondary school for 30 years. She taught math, secondary school. Um, she loves writing, sports, painting, comedy, visiting art galleries, talking to friends. And uh, right now she's gone back to school to finish a doctorate degree in counseling psychology. And uh, one little thing I'll add about Janet, she's got a wicked sense of humor. So just be careful with that girl. <laughs> She'll zing you. <ya. laughs> so, so at this point in our meeting, you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's so much information. It's coming very fast. We have this team of people that are here to help. And so if you go to the website, you will see their emails, their phone numbers, and uh, so well, thank you all for being here. And as, I, as, as Janet already said, at the end, if you would like to stay for a breakout room, you will be in with one of the field reps or one of our, our people that uh, has experience. So thank you all for joining. Um, I'm just gonna remove the spotlights here because this is kind of a new trick that I'm learning how to do. It's fun. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually have a little taste of the demo. I, I do have here, if you can see, this is the little booklets that you're probably familiar with, and this is the USB. So if you are interested in getting a kit, we're not doing your custom orders this year, but if you're interested in a kit with uh, five of these and one of these, then you just go onto the website and you can order that. It does. There is a cost to it but everything is available for free uh, on the website if you're registered as a coordinator. So let's go over and have a sneak peek at a demo, a two minute demo of this service that has been recorded involving women of three generations from right across Canada. And I think at the end, you are going to um, perhaps see some pictures of people that you recognize from World Day of Prayer 2020. Let's go over to that. Welcome to the World Day of Prayer 2021. Bienvenue à nos sœurs et frères du monde entier. Oh, the ground is sinking sand. We are pleased that you are joining us by video as we gather with people from across Canada in a different but meaningful way this year. As we pray for you, and we would like you to pray for us too, yeah. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. Let's respond together by saying, happy is everyone who trusts in the house builder God. Let us be one of those. Amen. You'll see that I've built it on a very strong foundation because the women of Vanuatu want to remind us that we need to build a house on the solid rock. Let us listen now to more these words. My little brother and I grew up in a single parent home. In building a firm foundation for our lives, we must survey wisely and make good choices. 
With your support, we can continue to pursue peace, reconciliation, and healing in many areas of social injustice. What does the Lord require of you? Let us now be united in prayer with Vanuatu and the world. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, here I am, Lord. Everyone who hears the words of Jesus and acts on them will be like a wise person, and the house will withstand the floods. On the strong foundation now, she says the strong foundation. That's a little teaser. Actually, I am going to play at the very end the closing song, and that's where you're going to see more pictures. Um, I got a little ahead of myself there. But next, uh, we're going to have um, Mary Nordic, who is the chair of our World Day of Prayer team and a board member, is going to talk about um, grants. And let me see if I can find Mary and just sort of the grant program, just um, for just a, a little bit more of an understanding of what, uh, what happens to the offering money that comes in. Mary, over to you. Well, thank you, Kath. I am thrilled to be talking about grants because as we've said from the very beginning, that the World Day of Prayer is a movement, not just a day. We do gather in March to pray together, but then from this informed prayer, we go on to prayerful action. And Janet, do you have the slides ready? I do, Mary, just give me one. And just a few seconds. With that. Mm -hmm. So, World Day of Prayer is rooted in faith and call to action. Something very important to keep remembering. Okay, got the first one. Uh, Oops. Got, yep, whoops. <laughs> whoops. That's not the right one. Just one moment. Well, let's start at the end. Why not? <laughs> yes, let's do that. It looks good on my screen, Mary. It just didn't look good there. This hasn't started. Ah, good. We're, it's a go. So the offerings that we... Whoops. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Okay, uh, just okay. one more time because it's on the right one. Good. It's on the right one. I think so, I'm going to stick with this. Our offerings that are received through the World Day of Prayer transform prayers into action in the form of project grants that empower women and children in our own country and throughout the world. All regions share in the grants, with consideration being given to the greatest need. Next slide, please. If we can. In 2020, we had a great year. We were lucky that uh, we got through World Day of Prayer before the COVID started, and we had $100,000 distributed. These donations made it possible to respond to many needs in the middle of the COVID-19 regulations. And we weren't able to sponsor large group things, but with our help, support was given to women and children affected by domestic abuse, poverty, food shortages, human trafficking, racism, all things that don't take a holiday during COVID. Next, Grant. Next slide. Uh, this slide just gives you a few examples of the 2020 World Day of Prayer grants and if you'll note it is both grants that are given across Canada and internationally so it spreads beyond our own country and beyond our borders next please now I'd just like to highlight a few of the grant stories from 2019 we won't be hearing the reports from 2020 until now and so we'll go with the 2019 in the Sunshine Society of, Ca of Christian Community Services in Calgary, created an experimental therapeutic group program for 28 women. 75% of the participants reported reduced anxiety and depression and increased confidence and self-regulating. Wonderful achievement there. Next, please. In Manitoba, Carmen United Church used their grant to help support free capacity building community suppers, hosting at their building by various ministerial groups. 
the participants really enjoyed extra fruit and vegetables and the milk, which the grant allowed the organizers to add on a consistent basis. These would be foods that may not normally be available to people. So very important here. Next. In the grant story from Ontario, the Beginnings Family Services Care Centre in Guelph had a grant to support the care cupboard. And from the care cupboard, over 250 families each year are provided with free diapers, formula, baby wipes, and much more. Probably mostly in the form of support. So next. And Newfoundland and Labrador. Oakland United Church in Corner Brook used their grant to purchase toiletries for women who seek shelter at Transition House. As well, funds went towards supportive counseling and a social afternoon for clients to help them build relationships. Next. And this is one of my favorite from Nairobi. Kijiji Cha Abdendo Children's Project in Kibera which is the largest slum in Nairobi, was assisted with a grant to provide small enterprise management training to 17 women caregivers with established home-based businesses. Also, additional microloans enabled 15 more women caregivers to start new industries. And these new industries help them to care for the children as well as benefit the whole community. Next, please. Who can apply? And I should also note that uh, applications are accepted every year. And the deadline for that is, I believe, March 31st of each year. An application for a project grant will be considered from Canadian organizations, registered charities, supporting local and international initiatives with and on behalf of women. The applications which support program work with women in the following areas will be considered. Violence against women, economic justice, health, education, racism, and peace. Next, please. We encourage projects that are cooperative and promote self-sufficiency, contribute to raising awareness of underlying causes of suffering, contribute to women's empowerment, enable women to develop their full potential and provide education and training for women. So you can see there's a wide scope for projects. Next, please. Ecumenism is very important in our grant process. WIC is an ecumenical organization made up of 10 denominational partners. If you would like to know who the partners are, go to WIC.org for the up-to-date list. And this next point is very important to many people. Please note, we make every effort to ensure that we do not support any project that is contrary to the teachings of any of our church partners. Each application that is being considered for funding is read by the denominational appointees on WIC who may decline any application which is contrary to the teachings of their church. Okay, next. So, this is how the grants continue our good work that is begun through prayer. We benefit the causes of justice and peace in our troubled world, both at home and abroad. And please, please consider donating. Many, many small donations make up into wonderful grants that benefit many, many more. Thank you so much. Questions put in the chat, please. Thank you so much, Mary, and for all that helpful information. I think the grants applications and seeing the stories come in is one of my favorite parts of this work and, and also seeing everybody coming together. Uh, we have a couple more things. I'm seeing our time is going. It's so fun to be together here. We have, uh, we're going to have a Bible study a devotional by Shirley DeMerchant now. And then uh, we have a song that we're going to share. And then there will be questions and breakout rooms um, if you would like to stay for that. So let me find, I have to find Shirley. Shirley DeMerchant, come on down.
There you are. Great, thank you, Kath, and welcome everyone. This is so exciting to be able to do this together. I'm going to uh, read the main text for World Day of Prayer. This section of our agenda today is called Bible study, but we don't have time for a full Bible study. So I'll just be sharing a devotional thought after I read the passage. It comes from Matthew chapter seven. I'm reading verses 24 through 27. It's called the wise and foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. A few weeks ago, I had a very memorable experience. I was visiting someone who lived next door to a house that I grew up in. And I had never been to their house before. And as I drove into their driveway, I looked at this house from my childhood and saw a big blue dumpster in front of it and thought, the house has been sold and I'll never get a chance to go into it again. But when I was talking to this person I was visiting, I asked them about the house next door and they said, oh, someone just bought it and he's going to fix it up and sell it. And as if he could read my mind, he says, would you like to go over and see it? Well, I jumped at the chance. I lived my first eight years of my life in this house. And I hadn't been back inside that house probably for 40 years. So I was eager to see what it was like if it was the same. So when I went over to the house, I couldn't believe my eyes. Nothing had changed. The cupboards were exactly the same. The linoleum on the floor was the same. Even the wallpaper. This house was over 60 years old. I met the man who bought the house and I told him a little bit about the history. I explained that my father built the house in 1957 and he used wood to build the house from temporary housing that was built to accommodate workers who built the hydro dam in our community, the dam that my father would work at for 30 years. The man was very impressed with the house and he was working on the living room and he had torn the wallpaper off the walls. He had taken out the insulation and the gyp rock so we could just see the wood, the timber that was holding up the house. He listened intently as I talked about my childhood and the history of the house. And then he reached over and he grabbed one of those pieces of wood that was holding up the walls. And he said, they don't make houses like this anymore. And I looked at that two by four that he was holding on to, and it was rough. It had knots in it. It, so it even had some bark on it. It wasn't that pretty smooth stuff you buy at Kent's or other building supply stores. This was rough timber, and it looked as strong as the day it was put in. As I thought about that, I realized no one would have known what was behind those walls if the room had not been stripped bare. Now, this man took it upon himself to do this to the room, but we know that buildings often are stripped bare because of the weather. Jesus talked about that in Matthew chapter seven. He told the story of two houses that faced great storms. There was the rain that came down and the floods came up and the wind blew and only one house stood. The difference wasn't in the storm. Both houses faced the same storm. The difference was in what they're built upon. 
we know in life there are many storms. COVID has been a storm that has revealed many things. It revealed that our federal government wasn't ready for a pandemic. We didn't even have enough PPE to, at the beginning of the pandemic. And we've seen how we have failed to protect our seniors in seniors and retirement homes. And spiritually, some people have felt that COVID-19 has revealed that their faith is not very strong. Jesus' words in this passage are so relevant for us today. In verse 27, he said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So Jesus told us we needed to do two things. We needed to listen and do. Now, one of the really exciting things about COVID-19 is we have discovered we can do church online and many of us are listening to more spiritual content than ever before. We can sit in front of the TV or the computer screen or tablet or phone with our favorite mug, with a hot cup of coffee and do church. Or we can sit in our pajamas. But we might be listening more, but are we doing more? Jesus said we needed to do both things, hear and do. Now, building our life on a foundation is different than building a house. When you build a house, you build a foundation, and when it's done, you build the rest of the house. You don't go back and keep building the foundation. But for our lives, it's different. We keep adding to that foundation. So that gives me encouragement. God's not done with us yet. So we need to continue to listen and do. When I think about this, this is what difference I think it makes in my life that every time I listen and do, I have more willingness to forgive someone who has offended me. Every time I listen and do, I can endure a difficult situation just a little bit longer. I believe that when I listen and do, then I can trust God for a promise that just doesn't seem to be coming true. And every time I listen and do, I believe it deepens my faith so I can face one more challenge with grace. So I want to encourage you today, the Bible passage for World Day Prayer 2021, it's so perfect for these days. And I want to encourage you and say to you that I want and I pray that the Lord would give each one of us ears to hear and hands willing to do. Thank you. Thanks so much, Shirley. Do you want to, um, I'm going to, would you want to tell us a little bit about the pray now that you have going and how someone can join you on Facebook? Sure. One of the beliefs that we've had over the past few years is that World Day Prayer needs to be more than a day. And in our attempts to make it a movement, we decided that we need to pray for the writing country in particular more than once a year. And so twice a month, I have been leading a short time of prayer for Vanuatu and also the writing country for 2020 and past writing countries to encourage people to keep these countries in mind. So you can join, actually we have two more, the first Friday and the third Friday in February on Facebook. We'll have a Facebook Live. You can go to the WIC webpage and just join me for 15 to 20 minutes of prayer. It's been a great encouragement to me. It's been, uh, it's been a great encouragement to us as well. So thank you so much, Shirley, for all that you're doing. And I'm now going to bring in Linda and I'm, I'm noticing the time and in honoring of our time, I'm going to ask Linda to do our closing prayer. How can we have a prayer meeting without actual prayer? She's going to do a bit of a closing. Then we're going to um, have a sneak peek of one of the songs from the video, which you are the service video, which you're going to see lots of pictures. And then we're going to have the question and answers and breakout time. So Linda, close us in prayer. And then if someone would like to leave, you're free to leave. If you would like to put a question in the chat, we will be dealing with those right after the song. Over to you, Linda. Thank you, Kath. Let's just take a moment and just be still. 
and recall this day, the people we've seen online, the people that have shared leadership in this time. And let us give thanks. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather here today from all over Canada, from coast to coast to coast, and we give thanks for this time together where we have connected around Vanuatu, where we have heard how challenging technology can be, but there are resources and supports. God of grace and God of hope, we give thanks that you guide us with wisdom. You hold us by our hand as we journey into unknown territory. You know our name and you call us your beloved. God, be with us this day and bless each and every one of us as we go about the work that you do, as we hear your word, and as we use our willing hands to make a difference in this world. Because with you, God, and with each other, we can make a difference for goodness and grace, for love and peace in this time and in the time to come. God, we leave now to go about our day knowing we do not go alone, but we go with you in our hearts, in our hands, in our feet, and in our minds. Amen.